Welcome to Gail's Garden, Herbs and More. I'm hoping I have enough light for you. Uh, you've probably all heard about California's Pineapple Express or Atmospheric River, whatever they call it. They call it by all different names. It's been coming up. We've had lots of storms, lots of rain, which is really good. We needed it bad. Our reservoirs are finally starting to get some water in them again. So it's really a blessing. It really, really, really is. But anyway, I wanted to talk to you about a couple things. Um, something kind of different and interesting. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You know what that is? Well, it's different than the old ones. That's a slingshot. Now, the old slingshots, when I was a kid, we used to have these sticks. They would come up, and then at the top, it'd go like that, and you'd put rubber bands on it, and you'd shoot rocks. This one is, I guess you'd call a more modern-day one. So, let me, um, let me show you how it works. Okay. What you do is... You put your hand in here, and then you pull this back. See, when you pull back on it, I don't know if you can see, this little part here presses against your arm, and that part is soft, and so it doesn't hurt your wrist when you're pulling back. And you put your rock or whatever you're going to shoot in here, and you hold it between your fingers, and you kind of close it like that, I'm hoping you're seeing. Then you pull back. Now these are a lot stronger than rubber bands. I'm going to have to build my muscles up and practice. It's just been storming. I haven't had a chance to practice. But yeah, um, I'm in the woods a lot. Sometimes people's dogs run wild and stray up here. There's cougars. There's Mostly I have a problem with bears, but I can't shoot a bear with that. I'd only make him mad. <laughs> um, and these are which little steelies. Now, if you were to shoot one of these, you'd kill something, which I really, I don't want to kill someone's dog or cat or whatever, but I don't know. There may come a time I need that, but I'll mainly just want to sting the wild, the, the dogs that are chasing my chickens or something, or terrorizing my goats or whatever. So, uh, yeah, kind of an interesting weapon. Sometimes we need a personal protection weapon like that. But I just thought that was kind of cool. My son got me that. And then um, another type of protection that, that we need is a physical inside protection of our bodies. And that's why I'm into herbs so much. Now, I've already talked to you in other videos about some of these other projects that are sitting here, like my licorice root tincture, my fire cider, my vinegar, my um, hawthorn berry tincture for my heart. Um... I've talked to you about those, but to, um, before I get into this, what I'm going to talk about today, I wanted to show you this too. There's a little uh, eyedropper in there. My little disabled Chihuahua Chai has been really sick, and he's lost so much weight. I'm really worried about him. Uh, it doesn't get better. Um, he struggles with all kinds of problems. He wasn't supposed to live this long. He's eight years old, and the vet didn't think he'd live but a few months after he was born. Um, well, when I took him in, I got him probably between five and six weeks old. And, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, he's had problems since birth. And, uh, I've struggled to keep him alive, really. But there's been times when he's had a good quality of life. But it's been a really r rough winter and year for all of us. Um, we don't have the nice big house for him to run in and play or anything. It's just this little tiny trailer now. and um, It gets kind of cold up here. I have one little heater as long as they don't turn our electric off. Now, I've gotten another one. I'm going to do a different video on it. It's a little tiny wood stove. It's meant for little places like tents and RVs and stuff like that. Tiny homes, all that kind of stuff. So, I haven't got it together. I need to get a few more things for it. And um, I'll show that in another video. But um, back to my little Chai Chai. He's, if y'all pray, just send up a little prayer for my Chai. I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to have him put down. He's not well. He doesn't have a good quality of life at all now. He's been really sick. He smells bad because he's so congested. And this is uh, Hutinia cordata, which is really for viruses, but it's kind of good for um, if you're congested. I don't think it's in his lungs. I think it's in his head, but 
but he's all congested in the head and throat. He struggles to breathe. It may be getting into his lungs. So I wanted to try this. It didn't seem to help much. Um, I even broke down and got some Benadryl for him, which really doesn't help much either. But we'll just, it may be that time for him. I don't know. But anyway, that's, that's another thing I don't want to even talk about right now. Okay, this is something I want to talk about. Um, protection for the inside of your body. We talked about the outside protection against critters and what have you. Um, but when we drink things or eat things that are bad for us, it brings our body down. And there's so many things our body has to fight against these days. Um, and something, especially in the summer, that I really have a weakness for is my, um, my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I don't drink other sodas usually, but I love Dr. Pepper. But i got to get away from that. Um, this is winter time, but this will still be a good drink. This is a, a homemade soda. And you take a root. Now, this is ginger. You can use other roots, because even if you use ginger, ginger, yeah, can be really potent, but... This part of it, your um, starter part, you really, when you mix in your syrup and stuff, you aren't going to taste it much. Unless you do like what I'm going to do, and my syrup is going to be a ginger syrup. Now, you can make berry syrups and all kinds of things like that, but I wanted something kind of like ginger ale a little bit. I do like a, that kind of a thing. So, I took two teaspoons of chopped up ginger root. You need your fresh ginger root, not dried. And uh, it's got, I'm not going to go into all the chemicals of a root and all that, but most of your roots um, have this in it so that you can get a starter from it. And um, I put two teaspoons of sugar. Now, you don't have to worry about the sugar because your the little bugs that will be growing in here, the good ones for your body, um, they will be eating the sugar and feeding off from it. And for seven days, you're going to feed it every morning and stir it. And in the evenings, you'll stir it. You just won't feed it in the evenings. Just feed it every morning, once a day. Add two teaspoons of your chopped root and two teaspoons of sugar. After seven days, now this is just a paper towel because I it was raining so hard and windy and everything. I didn't want to get out. Uh, neighbors let me use a little corner of the shed for storage, and I have some cheesecloth in there and that's the best thing <clears throat> but I put this on I need to go get some more cheesecloth and put on it but after seven days you can actually put a cap on it and put it in the fridge then you make your syrup that's a whole nother video in itself and after you combine the syrup with this you pour it in your bottles now you don't want to pour it in a big container because when you put something like this in a big container it kind of kills all the bubbles you need it in a small enclosed smaller maybe 16 ounce little bottles um, moving I had to get rid of so much stuff I got I think I got rid of all my little bottles I'm gonna look and see I might save some of my kombucha bottles that I get from the store and pour it into that then you let it sit on the counter now if it's berries it's usually less from what I hear time but about two three days something like that you can test it out see how your bubbles if you like it really mild bubbles or lots of bubbles and um, and then you can put it in the fridge when you get it to the consistent you see you want. The reason you're putting it in the fridge is because that stops the fermentation product uh, process. Don't worry about it tasting like a vinegar or something like kombucha often does. It's not like that. It's different than that. So um, if you do it right in the right consistency and don't just leave it, now, if you were to leave it out on the table for a month, it probably would turn into vinegar or something. So, yeah, just your seven days. And then your couple days, two or three, four days on the after you poured it, mixed it with the syrup and put it on the counter. And you have your own homemade soda pop that's actually good for you. So, um, yeah, just a few little things I wanted to share with you about that. Um, another type of... Now, we've talked about protection physically for the outside realm. We've talked about protection for physically for the inside realm. One other thing I want to mention is protection for the spiritual realm. We are under a really terrible spiritual, evil spiritual attack. Um, the whole world is. and um, So I would highly, highly recommend that you seek out the Lord Jesus Christ in his word, don't always just listen to man, but do your own studying. Find find out what's real and what's right. Um, 
there's a great peace there in him. And he is our spiritual protection. That's the whole reason Jesus came. We can't be good enough to make it to heaven. We need his righteousness to get us there. And that's why he had to come and be a sacrifice for us. And when we put our trust and our love in him and our belief in him, then he covers us. And we become a new creature at that point. If you don't change, something's wrong. You just have maybe a head knowledge, but you haven't really repented. You haven't come to him in belief and believing that he died and rose again the third day. And go to him. And, and there's a change that happens inside. I was really young. I was only 10, which is very, very young. But there was a definite change in me, even at 10 years old. And... There's times that, yeah, I fall away from the Lord. There's been times in my life. But if you're his child, he disciplines you. The Bible says he disciplines you like a father disciplines their children. He probably, I would imagine he does it differently with each person because each person is different. Just like your children, you handle a little bit differently. Not showing um, favoritism from one to another, but different children learn differently. And the same thing with discipline. I mean, I don't know. My daughter, she really didn't need spankings. She got a few, but um, or anything like that. She didn't need that because, but she did get some discipline, maybe in another way. But you just look at her or talk to her in a cross voice, and she, it just broke her heart. She was very tender. Now, if I would have been really overly strong on her or something and spanking her all the time or something like that, it would have, it might have broke that tenderness to where she didn't listen anymore. So each child is different, and you have to handle a little bit different. I don't mean to get into that part of rearing children, but it's so true. I mean, I taught for many years and um, in private schools and stuff, and I've dealt with children in other situations, working through Parks and Rec and a lot of different things throughout my life. Um, and children, they're just different. Each one is different, and you handle each one different. And our Heavenly Father, I'm pretty sure, would handle us a little bit different. Some he may have to discipline a little more harshly. Others of us, when we realize, and that conviction is there, and we see we might come to repentance a lot quicker. So, so much for all of that. I just wanted to leave you with different ways of self-protection in different categories. And think about... Um, the physical, inside and outside, and the spiritual. And we will leave you with that. And I hope you got something out of my video. I thank you for my new subscribers and for my old ones that's been here a while. I thank you for sharing my videos on your social media and with friends through your email. That, that helps because I don't get pushed out by YouTube. And um, But that way maybe I can grow some and I'm not just talking to myself on these videos. So, um, thumbs up if you would, if you like this video, if you learned anything. And subscribe if you haven't because it's free. And it just helps my channel when you do that. And helps YouTube to say, well, these people seem to like her. Maybe we'll push her out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping. Uh, but anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe. Love ya. Bye-bye for now.